That is a song <clears throat> that Susie sang with the girls. And that was by request, right? Your mom sang that with you, right? Yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the Gorton and the Probes families, thank you for coming today. Um, we've come to worship God together and to honor his servant Susie's life, a life which is far shorter than any of us would have liked, yet a life in which we were all privileged, greatly privileged to share. Uh, the family is glad, and the Lord is glad that you're here. Anytime someone we love leaves us so suddenly and, and early in life because of sickness or accident or, or some other terrible thing, in times of great grief, the world can seem to close in around us. And it is precisely in those times, on days like this, when perspective becomes very, very important. Uh, so many in our world think days like this mark the end and they're left without hope. And yet those who follow Jesus Christ are not among the hopeless because the Christian perspective, which Susie shared, is far longer and higher and deeper than just that which we can see and sense. Uh, it is nothing less than eternal. Clear back in the first century, in his second letter to the Corinthian Christians, we get a glimpse of that, this eternal perspective in the life of the Apostle Paul, even considering the many troubles and tragedies of life, and, and he was certainly no stranger to trouble and tragedy. Paul was able to declare that while the pains of life here are very, very real, Paul said they are, from an eternal perspective, light and momentary afflictions. Imagine that. He in no way diminished them. That would be cruel and that would be foolish. But he did understand them to be temporary. In fact, he goes on to say that those whose trust is in Jesus can trust him to even use life's hardships to somehow prepare us for that eternity. Although God does not cause these tragedies, in fact, he grieves them, neither will he waste them in our lives. So it's with that sort of perspective that Paul reminds the people of Corinth and he reminds us today. He says, he writes these words. He says, take heart and set your mind, concentrate not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen, though they are real, they are temporary. The things that are unseen, that is what is eternal. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, from whom we've come and to whom we go, we know that you are always with us. You were there at our birth. You've been there in every chapter of our lives, whether or not we've noticed you. And you're here with us today. Would you help us in these moments together to turn our attention to the things that really matter in life, to you, and to the eternity we all face beyond our years here, so that we might always be able to see the events of this world, whether joyful or painful, in the strong and overcoming light of eternity. Father, join us in a special way as we celebrate Susie's life. It's a race well run and finished in faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to sing number 379. This is a song that was sung at Chris and Susie's wedding. Uh, the hymnals are red, and they are probably in the seat in front of you, uh, be below the seat in front of you. 379. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet 
and let them be swift and beautiful for thee, swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Filled with messages from Thee Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose, every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour At its feet its treasure store Take myself and I will be Ever only all for thee Ever two scripture readings today, um, one a truth and one a promise. Let's start with the truth, 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But if we know in part, but we prophesy, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. And the second reference is a promise. And it comes from 1 Thessalonians, verse 13 through the end of the chapter. But I do not want to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, and we who are alive and remain 
until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another and yourselves with these words. Amen. I would like to start by saying thank you on behalf of the Probst and Gordon families to everyone who has prayed for us, sent over food, sent love and messages of encouragement. We have felt loved and lifted up in prayer. We have received messages and, and encouragement from all over the country and even from other parts of the world, which is truly humbling, but also reminds us of how much of an impact Susie had on those who she met in each phase and each area of her life. First, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote during the first 48 hours of the grief I experienced when learning of Susie's passing. This was written from my heart. I do not claim to be a poet or a well-trained in composition, so bear with me. What is a sister? Can that be defined? The meaning to me grows deeper with the passing of time. The friendship of a sister I yearned for as a child. The Lord blessed me with two brothers, but still, all the while. As time went by, there were great things in store. My heavenly father had a sister in mind for me to adore. God knows our hearts and truly brings blessings our way. Such a blessing was so richly gifted to me as I neared my wedding day. A gift truly from the Lord, a gift like no other. A sister for me when I married her brother. Our friendship was special, so rich from the start. Susie was so easy to love with such a tender and sweet heart. There was a common bond between us that fulfilled my having a sister dream. The same college, the nursing school, families, babies, and also having played on the Asbury basketball team. I was blessed with the privilege of watching the growth in Susie's life into a best friend, a sister, compassionate nurse, loving mother, and devoted wife. These characteristics in Susie, so easy to see and to know, she took a, on each of these roles with a beautiful glow. She loved her daughters deeply. God blessed her with three. Kylie Grace, Catherine Elizabeth, and Eliana Lee. To have Susie as your mom is to be blessed beyond measure. I pray that her girls can store her memory as a treasure. <sighs> Family time was her favorite. She did not want to miss out. Time with siblings, parents, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews was what she was all about. <sighs> Susie gave so much of herself. She had a servant's heart. Jesus' love and grace, no doubt, was her desire to impart the love of Jesus she did show to her family, to her friends, to the patients she cared for as an amazing RN. Life seems so unfair and we don't understand. We must keep loving, keep trusting that God has a plan. We are heartbroken by this loss but so very thankful to that Susie, we were blessed to have known and loved you. 
So what is a sister, you ask as this ends? She is the very best mix of cherished family and closest friend. Next, I'll be reading a tribute that was written by my husband, Mark, with input from his sisters. <clears throat> While my wife, Melissa, was always wishing for a sister, I was longing for a younger brother to play with. I can distinctly remember, remember at the age of seven, my parents sitting us kids down and informing us that we were going to have a younger sibling. I was certain that it would be a younger brother. I remember the initial disappointment when this turned out not to be the case. I thought my dream of having a younger sibling to play with was lost. However, once I laid eyes on Susie, I remember the sense of pride I had in being her older brother. Little did I know that the time she would, at that time that she would be more than willing to be the companion and play, playmate that I had wanted. We played sports and games constantly, all the time. I thought she was helping me get better at sports, but she was the one that ended up playing bas college basketball. So maybe it was the other way around. I adopted her birthday, 22, as my number for my sports jerseys, something she adopted for herself as she got older. I remember the devastation we felt when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes alerting my parents that she had lost 12 pounds, playing cards with her in the hospital, pricking my finger in sympathy along with her. She displayed such strength with all of the changes in her life despite just being 10 years old. As I grew older and went off to college, I, eventually, I was eventually able to introduce her to Melissa and their friendship flourished. Susie's sense of adventure and companionship remained. She climbed Mount Fuji, which is over 12,000 feet, more times than I. Together, Melissa and I, with Melissa and I, she climbed through the night to see the sunrise, climbed back down, and then headed off for a full day of roller coasters at an amusement park before heading home to sleep. That was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> As I reflect back on Susie's life, a couple of things come to mind. She loved the Lord. She loved her friends. She loved music. She loved adventure. She, she worked hard. She loved giving of her time. She loved giving presents. She loved planning parties. But the thing that stands out in my mind is her love of family. She loved Chris and her girls. She loved her family. She loved her extended family. She made a point to come to Georgia nearly every year to visit us. When we would come and visit family in Kentucky, Susie wanted to spend all the time she could around the family. She wanted her kids to know their cousins. We would sometimes joke that, that while taking pictures of all the cousins, the adults would turn into the Probst Arazzi with all the efforts to get the kids to smile and look at the camera. Susie was the unabashed leader of the Probst Arazzi. If you can see her, if you can scan her Facebook timeline, you can see the importance of her family and her life. In the, last week of Susie, in the last week of Susie's life, we were able to gather once again as a family here in Kentucky. We went snow sledding together, played games, and just spent time together. And then we gave our goodbye hugs, expecting to do it all again soon. This quote about grief, that, that this is a quote about grief that I have always liked. Grief is just really love. It's all the love you want to give, but cannot. All that unspent love gathers up in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in the hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. Well, with Susie's passing at such a young age, I now view this quote as somewhat incomplete. Yes, we all have unspent love for Susie, but it is not just love with no place to go. Being taken from us at such an early age, Susie has unspent love as well, and it would have been directed at God, Chris, and her three girls, and her family and friends, and that's where we should direct our unspent love. Susie would have wanted it that way. We love you, Susie, and we wait, await the day that we may reunite with, reunite with you in heaven. This is from her mother, Priscilla. Yeah. 
Susie was our caboose blessing to complete our family. She was 15 years younger than our oldest and seven and a half years younger than her closest sibling. Yes, I took her to Becky's high school home economics class to demonstrate caring for a baby. <laughs> when we were out and about in Japan, we could hear ladies talking about who was the baby's mother, Becky or I. How devastating to be considered a grandma when you were 38 years old. <laughs> Susanna from earliest childhood was very caring, very motivated to help others in any way possible. When she was just 10 years old, she came to me and asked me to list the references from my ba favorite Bible verses. Then she, with a bit of help from her daddy, typed them up, printed them into a little book with a cover made from a beautiful Japanese washi paper. From then until present, I have cherished that book so very much. Now it is more precious than ever before. She always lives so selfishly for others. Words can never express how much help she has been to me, being the child who lived closest to me since Dennis passed away in 2016. Her help and selfless care for me in the past couple of months meant more to me than words could ever express. She gave of her time, her money, time away from her own family, less sleep than, she, than what she needed in order to be near me and care for my needs. I thanked her and hugged her often, but how I wish I had one more chance to hug her, thank her, and perhaps repay her in some small way for her love and care and help. It was clearly obvious to all of us, her family, classmates, teachers, and friends, that Susie pushed through her diabetes with great courage, perseverance, and acceptance. It was actually amazing and only possible to the degree because she knew God was with her and was empowering her day by day. She refused to let it stop her from doing anything she wanted to do. Susie was in transition often between the two countries in her growing up years. Even as a very young child, she did not like saying goodbyes. And today, our entire family is finding it so very difficult to say goodbye to her. But I am comforted to know that her daddy welcomed her with one of his great big bear hugs. And best of all, she is in the presence of Jesus himself. In addition to transition from one side of the world to another, Susie lived in many, many different homes during her life from birth to adulthood. During such, one such transition, when she was just two years old, she asked the question, where is home? And today I would answer, Susie dear, you are finally home. I'm gonna close just with reading two um, verses that have been um, I, I guess just a reminder for me in this time and somewhat of an encouragement. First Chronicles 1611 says, look to the Lord and his strength to seek his face always. And John 330 says, he must become greater and I must become less. This is a note from Chris. Susie was the love of my life, and there will never be another woman made like her. She was an amazing mother, a kind and supportive wife, and my best friend. She meant a great deal to many people and shined the light of Christ everywhere she went. She had an empathic way of knowing what kinds of gifts people would, bring, would give people joy, and she made a point to try to give people extremely thoughtful gifts. She also had a Christ-like innocence, but could scold someone that was being inappropriate while also letting them know how much she loved them. By someone, I mean me. <laughs> she was my memory, my calendar scheduler, the mother of my children, and the love of my life. I wish you could see how many people loved her, and it's an honor and privilege to see how many people's lives she touched in some way. May God bless you all in peace. Susie, you will be greatly missed. Ashi Teru. In that service order, there's a, uh, an old chorus, which actually has become new again. And uh, Susie and Chris taught it to the girls. Uh, 
it's the one that you're thinking of if you are thinking of this one. <laughs> and we are going to sing it. Uh, it's an echo song, you know. Uh, I'll sing the first part of the, and then we'll just sing it through a couple times, okay? He has shown thee, O oh man, now everybody, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. Same here. But to do justly, and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. One more time. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. If you uh, happen to follow either sports or national news at all in these past few weeks, you know that on the day before Susie died, one of the Buffalo Bills football players Damar Hamlin was his name. He collapsed of an apparent heart attack in the middle of a game, Monday night game. Later on that same evening, another player, I forget his name, but he was, about, he was the same age as Damar Hamlin, young, 24, I think. He was interviewed about it. And he made the comment in that interview, he said, you know, someone my age, I never even thought that I could die. With those words, that player captured the thoughts of so many people who watched what happened to Hamlin there on the field in Cincinnati. But that very same thought describes us, doesn't it, as we sit here today, most of us still in shock, really, over what happened to Susie. It never even crossed our minds that she could die. I remember thinking the same thing a few years ago when my cousin died at age 51. He was a big, strong guy. And all of a sudden, he was gone. 51 is awfully young to die. I remember thinking that, but 36 is even younger. It's even younger. And we're left to wonder why. If we're honest, we all struggle in our minds with the fairness and the, the justice of it. In her work, Susie knew well how things like heart problems and diabetes and strokes and cancers, she knew they seemed to attack our bodies so indiscriminately. She cared for people of all different ages with all different kinds of illnesses. Why is that? How is it that we can be so susceptible and so suddenly to disease and, and to death? And where is God in it? How does he fit into it? It's okay if you're asking those questions. Uh, they're good questions. And I want to spend just a couple minutes considering those questions together. The Bible tells us that there is a God. And he's not just some impersonal force out there in the sky. But there is a God with a name. There's a God that we can know. The Bible says that this God created this world that we live in, and he created it to be good, a beautiful world, a world without pain and disease and, and death. 
And he made it because he wanted a special place for us, <laughs> for humanity, boys and girls, and men and women, and you and me. We are creations of God. The complexity of our bodies proves that, if nothing else. Again, Susie understood that very well. And we're put here for a reason. And the reason is that we might know God and that he might know us and that we could have a relationship together with him. He started a long time ago with two people. He created a man and a woman in his image and that, in part, means that he gave them a free will. He gave them the ability to choose what they would do with their lives, just like God himself has the ability to choose. God put that man and woman into that good world, and he asked them to be a part of his family. He told them, I'm your creator. I'm your source of life. If you'll live with me, if you'll do as I say, then we'll enjoy one another forever. He asked them to choose to love him. And of course, you know what they did. Uh, they rejected God. They walked away from their creator and their very source of life. And in doing that, they brought death into that good world that he'd made. A world that was never supposed to know death. And so now, we have death in our midst. Uh, and over the course of time, because more and more people decided that they wanted to do things their way and not God's way, this good world became, in some ways, not so good anymore. Oh, it's, it's still very beautiful, you know, you look outside. It reflects a lot of its original beauty and grandeur. But you and I know all too well, and especially we know today, that this world is now a world of pain and suffering and death. So... What is God to do with us and with our world? How does he respond to the decisions humanity has made? On one hand, God is absolutely just, and he needs to deal with the mess that humanity has made of itself and of his world. So he would be entirely justified in just wiping us out. After all, he's not the one who walked away from us. We walked away from him from our source of life. Humanity chose death in that moment, so he would be right in just giving us what we deserve. But the thing is, God loves us too much to just let us go. God is just, but he is also love. He created us in love, and in spite of how we have treated him through our lives, he is still very much in love with us, with you, and with me. And so you might say, God had a problem. How does he deal with us justly, but also lovingly? Well, he came up with a plan that none of us would have ever thought of in a million years. At just the right time, a little over 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus, to live here with us in this earth and to live a perfect life and then to die in order to pay our debt, the just for the unjust, to satisfy the requirements of his own justice. What God did through Jesus was he made a way for you and me to escape eternal death. That was his solution. You see the signs, you know, at every sporting event on TV, probably at that Bills game. There was some sign hanging over a banister in the stadium that says John 3.16, right? Some of us memorized that verse when we were kids. This is what it says. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That was God's solution in one sentence. And you know, no truer words have ever been spoken. God loves each one of us so much that he has given us a way to escape eternal death. He's given us a way to, to come back into relationship with him. A relationship that we can enjoy while we're here on earth and one that goes on after we depart this life. And the way into that relationship is to follow Jesus. To, to stop putting our trust in ourselves as if we could ever save ourselves. 
and start putting our trust in Jesus and in what he has done for us. Because Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth and I'm the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. The fact that we are here today because none of us thought we would be. Uh, the fact that we're here today reminds us that we live in a broken world, a world where death still takes those we love from us. But this world is not the end for us. We are eternal creatures. We were made to be. We weren't made to die. God made us to live. People say, you know, you hear people say that death is just natural, but the truth is it isn't natural. The fact that today isn't pleasant, the fact that we naturally resist death with everything we have, that's proof of that. We are programmed to fight, to live as long as we can, because God made us to live, and he made us to live eternally. And if we haven't already, you and I have to face that fact. We are eternal creatures. And because of that, we need to make some decisions about our eternal life to come. Now, I can tell you with great relief and great joy that Susie made those decisions a long time ago. Uh, she trusted in God. She trusted in his plans. She followed Jesus. She modeled a life of faith and love to her family and her friends. You saw the evidence of that last night if you were here. She modeled that kind of life to all of us here today. So we know where Susie is today because of the decisions she made regarding Jesus and the life that she lives seeking to please him. She's with him as he promised those who die in him would be. And because of that, in the midst of this tremendous grief, we can have peace. We can have peace. But I have to tell you that none of us are guaranteed any time beyond the present moment to make those decisions. We are promised today only. And what we do with this day makes all the difference, both in this life, but more importantly, in our life to come, in eternity. So I wonder if, if you just take a moment here as we close and consider your eternity. That's what we're really considering here as we remember Susie's life. Would you consider your eternity? The fact that we are here today where we never imagined we would be proves to us that any one of us may face our eternity far sooner than we know. So if you've never considered Jesus, if you've never placed your faith in Jesus on behalf of Susie, I'm asking you to consider doing that today. If you would, it would please God. Uh, and may I say, it would please Susie because he was so much a part of her life. And because one day you will see one another again. Would you pray with me? Father, we come to you today hurting and looking for comfort and, and looking for answers maybe and looking for hope. And graciously, through Jesus, you offer us all of these we recognize, some maybe for the first time, how uncertain life is and how very mortal we are. But we also recognize the sure hope that we can know, the hope that Susie herself demonstrated so beautifully and faithfully in Jesus. We see clearly today, albeit painfully, that life on this earth passes away. But at the same time, we realize there is sure hope for tomorrow because of what your son Jesus did for us. Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for making a way for us to have eternal peace, a peace that Susie knew and that she knows even more deeply today. Would you help us to seek you as she did? And as we do, would you bring comfort and peace to our hearts. And Father, to Chris and to Kylie and Katie, Beth and Eliana especially, would you give what only you can give in these days as we all wait in faith to see Susie again? 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The program says I'm to give a, a benediction. That's Latin for good word. And some wonder how any good word could be given today. But our good word is Jesus. Susie knew that. Susie lived for him. And because of him, there's hope. Uh, the family is so glad that you have come today. Uh, if you came last night... Uh, to encourage them and express your love for them. Thank you so much for waiting in that line. <laughs> it was a huge line. Um, for those who weren't able to be here last night, the family's going to remain here at the front for just a few minutes. So if you, if you need to just quickly greet them before they go to the cemetery, you, you might come up and do that. But otherwise, uh, I want to dismiss you in the peace and in the name of Christ. Thank you so much for coming today. Amen and amen.